Hello, uh, I'm out here in the evening, which is a little bit unusual. Um, I wanted to just take stock of what parts I've got with regards to the valve gear. And I've cleaned up um, six exhaust valves those two over there and two inlet valves uh, so I've got I need to find two in uh, exhausts and six inlets so I need to find good used parts of those um, I've tallied up I've got I've got 14 springs 15 keepers, but I know I've got plenty of those some you know some, somewhere else I've got 14 lifters uh, What's this? 13 guides and six horseshoe keepers So I'm gonna clean these up I'm going to throw them in a, a bucket and with some cleaner and then use the Sonic cleaner as well. But I, and I, I'm going to do all these together except for these and I'll keep these in their matched halves. Here's a typical valve. They've all been put in the lathe to clean that face there and in doing so they're, they've been checked for straightness as well. So I'm just trying to get together the complete kit of parts that I need. I'll show you some more when there's some more to show. Okay, cheers then. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. 59 flatty valves. I've taken all the valves that I had and I've taken all the guides that I had and I've sorted through some used parts that were left over from other engines and I've put together a set of valves and guides and what I've just done I've ground all of the valves in now you can see that one's a long way down that's because I had to cut the seat a long way back and that one's a little bit similar and that one's about halfway that one's about halfway I've been thinking about this engine and because of the way it was stored I can't guarantee that this engine is crack free my game plan for this engine because I can't 100% rely on it not having a problem down the line is not to invest lots of money time and effort on it so I'm going to treat it like the crusty flatty where I will get it running using as many parts that I already have around me as many parts from the original engine as I can and a, a minimum amount of new parts and a minimum amount of expenditure basically and then I'll put it in one of the vehicles and, and run it and drive it that might be the end of the story I mean it it might run fine and I might not feel like doing anything with it if it gives good service but if it proves to be a problem you know there's some cracks or something that I, I haven't seen or haven't found or something you know like all that brazed repair doesn't work or one of the liners fails or you know the the oversized liner might be a problem um i haven't lost a lot of money in it if, if any of those things are a problem if it proves to be a good engine i've got a choice then either keep it as it is as a good good engine or you know it could then be the basis of a, another rebuild further down the line where I can plow money into it where I can 
spend time and effort, you know, on the ports and things like that. You know, a new cam, oversized inlet valves, new valve seats, all those things. Um, all, of, all those things that I'm not prepared to put into this motor as it stands because I can't guarantee that, it, that it's crack free. The only way of guaranteeing that it's crack free is to have it driving trouble free for quite a while. I'll tell you what I have been very impressed with. Now other people are probably familiar with these but I've never seen one before. But these new way valve seat cutters, really powerful. And um, I'll just show you. Basically, I've got that one there, which is um, a, a standard split guide with this expandable mandrel that goes on it. Then you've got this handle that you can use. And I mean, I bought this second hand, this set. Those are all too small for a flathead, but this one's okay for a flathead. Um, and I, I'm really impressed with it but I'll tell you what I've been doing I've been using this I've been using this drill and that works really well everything needs washing again now because there's bits everywhere but um all the seats are okay, even if some of them have had to go a little bit deep, but they've all got a good surface all the way around. There's one or two pits in some of them, but they're not on the valve contact bit. The next big job is gapping the valves, and I, I have to fit the cam and the uh, lifters to do that. So there we are, some good progress made. Um, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. I'll film a little update at the end of each job. I'm not going to film every job because basically it's a repeat of what I did on the crusty flatty. Thanks very much then. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello. I thought you might like to see these. I bought these off UK eBay. And they are cam followers or tappets or push rods actually as Ford call them. Um, I'm going to use the old ones in this engine but I'm short of a couple and I don't have any good ones so I'm going to use a couple of these ones. There's a piece of wire there that I can just pull. A piece of string actually by the look of it. Okay, I'm not sure what's quite going on there. And they are, um, you know, old military stock. And I noticed there was a crack there. And they're on the, in this heavy sort of protective wax. Ah, oh, I see. It, it's kind of gone in inside the window so it, it doesn't want to peel off easy. Could do it coming out rather than going in. Okay, I have to poke it through from that side of it. The, but there you are, brand new look, brand new. Just a little minimal clean up required. Um, when I was in discussion about these parts with an older gentleman, he said, yeah, don't forget, he said, when they package those parts, they have to, um, do them so that if, if the boat that they was being carried on got sunk, they would last a certain amount of time. 
you know, under water before, you know, before they could be salvaged. So I'm going to have to get those bits out of there. I didn't figure on that actually, it's going to be awkward. But anyway, I only need two, so I'm going to put those away. Just use these two. I noticed that they're not kind of got that taper on the top. MO something. E91A6500. So there's E91A numbers. Okay, I'm going to clean these up, get those bits out of there. Hope I can get those bits out of there. Oops. Okay, there you are. Brand new old military stock. Not mega bucks. 30 quid delivered. Set of 16. Okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Um, I've put the 16 cam followers in. I'm just going to lower the cam in. This is just a bit of a dry trial fit. Everything needs another thorough cleaning yet. The idea is that I want to... The idea is that I want to um, just see how the gaps are. Give it a run through on the, doing the gapping. I'm going to put the mark downwards to there and that means I can do cylinder number one. Now this is cylinder number one and there's the exhaust valve. And there's the two followers there so I'll bring the engine back up again now. So there's those two. Okay. Just start at the end. So let's do the exhaust first. The camera's red. I'll I'll turn it off and bring you back when there's something more interesting to show. See you in a bit. Hello. I've done a couple of hours on the 32 since doing the radius rods, and I've brought the axle over lifted it into place and I've um, cleaned the threads on these <coughs> pardon me, cleaned the threads on these U-bolts because the threads are better than the other ones that I had than these ones here these threads are a bit partially stripped I've assembled up those lower spring clamps but they are on upside down I've got to do some modifications there. I've put the axle in place and the torque tube obviously and put the radius rods in place and I've offered up a pair of back plates, put the wheel cylinders in place and um, the brake pipes. Now I'd made these brake pipes years ago but to suit different radius rods than this. So I've sort of reshaped this area here. I've reshaped that area there to bring them in. I've actually found some of the original clamps. That one there. The opposite one over there. And that is one. This, these, this was off a of 39 and they've combined the clamp with the handbrake thing there. Uh, I need a clamp for there and I'll, I'll probably, I might drill and tap, no I might not actually, I don't know, yeah I'll, I'll put another one, I'll put another one here, I've just made um, the right pig's ear of welding this in place, but anyway it's in place now, so that's the, the brake pipe run from the master cylinder up to the 
torque tube, that's okay. Um, here's the other brake pipe, and there's a T piece there, and a little bracket that I made ages ago. So those brake pipes can be reused, I can just reuse those, they're, they're, they're pretty, you know, okay. I don't think they'll clash with any of the nuts and things. Um, this brake pipe goes here. Let's see if we can do it left handed. Yeah, that's just started. Due to the master cylinder or the radius rods or something, um, this brake pipe is no longer long enough. That's alright. I'll use it as a pattern. I'll make one, you know, inch and a half longer. Which, which can go there and that'll be quite a nice tidy job I think so even though it takes me ages and ages and ages to do things sometimes bump 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 things come together very quickly obviously this all, everything here is only mocked up but um, you know you have to mock it up before you can fit it all properly there's not much actual work or rework to be done it's just tidying tidying cleaning painting where necessary finding the right bolts doing everything up with the right bolts nuts bolts washers so i think to be honest that that looks pretty good all the front brakes are in place the brake pipes are in place and now, other than reworking that one there, all the rear brake, brake pipes are in place. The only thing left to look at is the rear shock absorbers. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do those yet. But, you know, when you consider, well, I've modified the torque tube, modified the drive shaft, uh, made a pair of radius, you know, modified a pair of radius rods to suit, uh, changed the master cylinder, you know, it's good progress, it's good progress. Okay, thanks very much then, I'll catch you on the next one. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I'm working on the old 59 flatty. I'm doing the valves. Um, these valves are ones that have been salvaged from this engine or other engines, as are the um, valve guides. And I have uh, been setting the gaps. And the method I'm using is the one that I the same method that I used on the crusty flatty. I've got the cam in place and the mark is here. I don't know if any of you remember but what I did I start off with the mark down there and I set um, both valves on number one. Then I move it to there, 45 degrees, and I set both valves on number five. Then I go 90 degrees, and I've done both valves on number four. Then I go 45 degrees up there, so it's one, five, four, eight. Then I did both valves on number eight over there. 15486, so then I had it there and I did both valves on number 6, which is that one there. And you can see the dial test indicator is over that valve. That's what I do, I do the exhaust, then I do the inlet. And now I've moved it from there to there, rotated it. So it's 154863, and then it's 72. So it's three. 
this is cylinder number three. Now because I've cut these seats quite deep, the valves, as they are sitting here, are rotating. They're not sitting on the seat. So I first of all need to know how much are they off the seat. So I need a dimension for that. And then I need to take that dimension, add on the clearance that I want, and that is how much I need to remove off the valve stem. So I need to start by moving the dial indicator onto this cylinder. What I thought I would do, because I've done, I've only got two cylinders left, because I've actually already done number two, is just show the process so that I have a little bit of video to show to indicate that I've set the valves. What I do, I kind of centre this over the bore of the cylinder that's, you know, been worked on. Okay, so the idea is Right, I'm going to do the exhaust first. That goes on there, and this goes on here. And I have to position this in line. Okay, so this is now positioned over the exhaust. That goes there. That's zero, but what I have to do, I have to look at the, the small dial there, and that's between the six and the seven. And now what I do, I pop the valve out, reach underneath, push the lifter out, grab it, put the lifter there, put the valve back in. So now the valve is sitting down on the seat. Okay. So I'll lift that up. Put it back on there and look at the gauge. Okay, that's between the six and the seven, and that's where it was before, so it's 20 thou. That's 20 thou down from where it was. The gap for a, a 59A exhaust is 14 to 16 thou, so that's 20. Plus 14 is 34, so I need to take 34 thou off there, 34 to 36 thou, and I'm going to do that on the lathe. Here's the, the old lathe, the old uh, Wilson flat, uh, slant bed. And what you can see, I've got um, another dial indicator over there at the back, and I've got a cutting tool here. What I've been doing, I, I wind that this back, I wind that there, so that, that the thing on the indicator, now you can just see the indicator, hopefully, and I, I wind the, ind the, tight, the, the carriage in, so the indicator goes to zero. I then lock the carriage. So that's zero on there, and I've got a little bit of welding wire here with a little hook on it, so I can lift that arm like that. So that's going to zero there. I'm going to start the lathe, watch out for a loud noise. Just checking that, that that wasn't too much run out. So I'm just going to touch that on there. Okay. I'm going to take 15 thou.
you can't quite see the angle there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring that indicator over and the indicator is reading minus 15, that's good isn't it? So I'm going to carry on. Let's take another 15. Now let's not do take 15, let's take 10. And I'll I'll bring the um, indicator over. Yeah, that's reading, actually reading about 26 and a half. Now it was 20 thou plus 14, so I want 34. So mm, this is the question now, isn't it? So if we call that, if we call that 27, I want another 7. I know that using one of these isn't the, the most accurate way, but let's just give it another 7. I'm going to be brave and give it 8. Okay, according to that thing, that's 35 thou, because it's on the 5 and it's 20 thou to there and then 20 thou there, so it would be 40 if it came back to the 0. So hopefully that might be in the ballpark. The reason I've got the valve tool in at this funny angle because I can just do this Ow. when you when you take these out you can if you pull them up at an angle like that, they'll kind of come out with the hole smaller than the valve head diameter. So you can kind of go in like that. Can you see that? So there's the valve. Let's um, so there's the valve. Let's go and see. I, I actually need to do another little process just to smooth this little the end there so I'll show you that as well. Um, what I've got here is um, a V-block and a couple of parallels and some abrasive paper and I drag it like that on the paper and the V-block and the parallels hold the valve square to the surface and it just makes sure that the surface is flat rather than sometimes you can get a little you know a little pip in the middle oh blimey I nearly knocked you over then did you? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, okay you nearly had a bit of a fall then okay let's um that was close I nearly dropped the camera let's put you back in there keep your fingers crossed then 
this is a good little tip. Look, use a, an O-ring on there and you can just do that like that. It keeps everything together. Put the lifter back in. That goes in there now. And now it's down on the seat, obviously. So we're looking for about 14, 15, 16 thou. Here's a 15 thou feeler. That's tight. Oh, it goes, but slightly tight. Right, 14 then. 8 plus 6. Oops. Yeah, lovely. 14 goes, easy. 14 goes, 15's got slight tightness on it. So I'm leaning against the valve, I can't quite see now. It's holding it shut and there's the the, the uh, 8 and the 6 together going through. Well that's the process and that went quite well. On, on, on <laughs> more than one, actually probably most of them. I've had to do more of that lapping Uh, so that's worked really well. So I'll go and repeat the process here now. I won't show the process. I'll just leave the camera running then I'll just speed it all up afterwards. Twelve goes but it's slightly tight so that's just about okay one Ooh, fifteen thou goes with with resistance so actually that's pretty good isn't it okay four goes six don't go four goes six don't go so I'm going to call it 5 and I'm aiming at 10. So I've got to take another 5 thou off. Now, the thing is, the lathe doesn't necessarily like taking a small cut. But I'm going to, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. That's 10 thou. Goes nicely. Ten thou goes nicely. Just you know, with a small amount of drag. When I initially did that, I measured it, and I took a cut, and I wanted eleven plus eleven, and I did eleven, and it read eleven on the thing. So I put another eleven on, and I cut it, but it seemed to cut heavy. And when I got the indication on there, it read like as if it had gone 25 there instead of 22. And when I put it in, it was less. So I don't quite know what happened, but I... No, I just don't know what happened, but... I suspect that the valve must have got pushed back in the jaw of the chuck. So the indication was that it had gone 25 thou. But actually, off the stem of the valve, it was less. So we've got away with that then. At least it's a safe error. By pushing back in the jaw of the chuck, it, it takes off less than you intended, which is safe. I don't need to do number two. Number two's done. One, five, four, eight, six, three, seven, two, and that was seven. You've seen me do three and seven. I've done two. 
and then it's back to one. So there we are. I've gapped all the valves. Um, some of these seats were cut very deep. On these ones, they weren't too bad, and I was taking sort of 20 thou off. Um, 20, 30 thou, in fact, that's quite a lot, actually. On some of them, I had to take um, 90 thou, which isn't good at all, is it, really? But this is just a, let's try and prove if this block is good. If it runs fine, it can get rebuilt to a much higher spec further down the line, you know, maybe not by me, maybe by somebody else. I just want to prove that the block is okay because who knows if it's got hidden cracks or problems that I don't know about. Who knows if those repairs that I've made are good. Okay, I'm getting fed up with the sound of my own voice here, so I'm going to sign off now. Thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks for joining me in the garage. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Okay, what we have here is my 32 frame and I have this spirit level across the front there and I have shimmed the front of it level by putting that hacksaw blade in the axle stand down there in the V. Um, I have also leveled the rear part of the frame here by shimming here. So the reason why I want the chassis level is because I'm going to weld in, well, I'm going to weld up some braces. Now, I don't know if these will work or not, but I'm sure with them in place it will be better than with, it, with them not in place. And what they are, are the, the old radius rods from the four-cylinder axle. You, some people might be able to recognise them. So ignore that end there because there's a piece missing. But that end there is as it is normally bolted to the axle. And what I've done, I've made a plate that will bolt onto the inside of the chassis rail on the existing bolts. And I'm going to weld the radius rod to the plate so that it isn't just shared on that one bolt. It's shared across two, possibly three bolts. And I've also got the opportunity to possibly put like a, let's say a strip running along the bottom of there. There's a hole there and a hole there. So I might put a strip of, you know, three mil material along there and weld it to there as well. So it's kind of, it'll be well, you know, attached to the chassis. Here I've got the radius rods finishing and attached to a tab that is bolted to that double angle bracket that is bolted to the chassis. What I want to do is, I haven't welded this one yet. That one's welded, uh, but I just slackened everything off and I've double checked that the chassis is level. Now I'm gonna tighten up all these bolts and I'll tack this and when I've tacked it all I will then take it all apart and you know fully weld it all oh yeah sorry and I'm going to tack this to there as well um, I did this I kind of roughed this out and mocked it up a couple of days ago and I've been working around it doing the brake pipes. The reason I'm saying that is a very simple one. 
all the time I've been doing the brake pipes, nothing about this screamed at me saying, no, that's a rubbish idea, don't do it. It just kind of sat in there and to my eye looks okay. And like I said, these things will run without anything. So I think that will help a little bit with the torsional stiffness. I once rode in a roadster owned by a very well-known gentleman whose name is synonymous with traditional hot rods. And as he drove down the road, an undulating country road, you could feel the chassis flexing and the the gentleman's friend you know the, the mutual friend said yes it's known as being loose spelt you know like in the same way as you spell deuce d-e-u-c it's loose l-e-u-c-e so i thought mm, okay <laughs> on my roadster i've got a much more um substantial x frame that runs as a continuation from there across to here and from there across to there X like one piece is continuous and the other piece butts onto it and with a similar arrangement down below as well and the chassis on that car is very very stiff now I didn't feel inclined to want to emulate quite that level of additional metal work so I thought this will be a decent little compromise where I used to work at Jaguar cars when they used to do the convertible version of let's say uh, you know the X100 or the X150 you look underneath and the, all there is underneath the back end are some bolted on stiffeners so using the kind of that sort of idea that all you need is like a bolt on stiffener that's what i'm doing and i've used early ford parts to to do the the main part of it okay i will put a couple of tacks on and then I might actually leave it in its tacked state for a while and just work around it and if I get to the point where I haven't found any objection to it I will then finish it off trim all the front bracket down so it looks nice and um, you know just put the finishing touches to it okay I thought I would share that with you I thought I'd show you that uh, I haven't seen anybody else do anything quite the same as this. I've seen similar things which are quite substantial, but um, they're not suitable for a sedan with a, with, a, with a floor that dips down. It's only suitable for flat floored bodies. So I'm going to put a few good tacks on it now, and then I'll, um, like I say, at some point in the future I'll show you the finished job. I've reshaped this to suit this because I've rotated that so this comes up at more of an angle. And I, I remade this pipe there uh, and it's a little bit longer than the old one. I've put a clip on there just to make sure that it looks okay with a clip on it and I've put a clip on there and everything fits okay. I want to drill and tap and put another clip around about here on this one. Okay, thanks a lot then. I'll catch you later. Hello again. Right, so I've had a good session with the welder. There's that side welded on, bolted in. It's all quite hot still at the moment and there's the front coming down and bolted through. Um, here's this side. 
welded up, bolted in. This had had some previous welding before in this area here. And I, I had to weld it there as well because it had cracked. Um, I burnt through there and I had to turn the welder down and go on a lower power and fill the hole. And there's that side um, bolt, bolted in. Nothing's ground, nothing's, you know, painted, nothing's cleaned. It's all looking pretty good, I think. Just have a look from down low. You know. Looks okay, don't it? Little bit by little bit. As I always say, a little bit by little bit. It all starts to come together. I'll leave it there for now then and I'll bring you back when there's some more to show. Thanks a lot then. Cheers. Hello, welcome to another little session on the 32. Right, it looks like it's all come apart. Well, it has actually. I've taken the radius rods off and the frame brace and disconnected the brake pipes. And um, these are just the little peripheral jobs, but I'll just put a little bit of primer on that bracket. Just put a bit of primer on there where I did all that work with straightening it. Um, and in the side shed here, in the side shed, I've got hanging up the um, the radius rods for the brace, the, the end two down there, and these two are the radius rods for the axle. And I've kind of cleaned up all the welds, um, cleaned them on a wire wheel. Here's the bracket for the um, that will go you know, on the frame, on the, where the brake thing used to mount for the brace. And there's the master cylinder bracket there. I cut and bent the ends in and welded those up. Got some sort of fairly sticky out beads on the bottom, but I'm just gonna leave those because they're not in the way there. Oh, and I've drilled and tapped a little hole there on the side. Can you see that? That's for the brake pipe clip. You can see the thread kind of through there. Okay, so that represents quite a lot of work actually cleaning those. And all I need to do now is give them a coat of um, black paint and they can all go back on, I think. I'll say that. I'll have to think about if there's anything stopping me from doing that. Okay, anyway, a little bit of progress to report. So, you know, it's all coming together quite well. I um, put a bit of, just a little dash of primer on those areas there that were, got that not particularly attractive pink um, primer on them. I didn't really want to paint the outside of the frame rails, but um, to be honest there, to be honest, I might as well just dust that in with a bit of black paint there because it's hidden, it'll be hidden behind the wheel anyway. Okay, right then, little bit by bit I'm making progress. Okay, thanks a lot then, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!